Alrighty, howdy everyone. Welcome back to the MatchNet Podcast. This is your host, Benji, and your co-host, Yana Johnson. How you doing, Yana? Hey, doing good. All right, we got an awesome topic today. We're going to be talking about what? What are we talking about? Siblings, realm of heart, siblings love. Siblings what love. Really like? Yeah. What does it look like? This is a huge question. What does it mean to have a healthy relationship with the opposite gender between brothers and sisters, especially if you're preparing for matching and especially, especially if you are matched or currently in a conversation and you're trying to figure out how to have a healthy relationship that is not just fueled by passion and and romance and and all the stuff that we we look forward to right yeah look and it's like to- those things are great things look <laughs> forward to that's part of what husband and wife but i feel like i've been thinking a lot about our match couples especially cuz blessing tends to be you know once a year and so there's a lot of time that they're matched and what is that we tell them we say like right your yeah. brother sister Till you're as you're matched until you're blessed and what does that look like and even the 40 day right it's about brother sister still being brother sisters yeah. um yeah so i thought it's good to give some practical yeah. examples and 100 yeah them. we're gonna get into that uh i just wanted to give a shout out to everyone that's listening to the podcast uh if you're enjoying this podcast please share it with your friends and family your team because this is the only podcast that is for single folks who are preparing for the matching and blessing. And we make these episodes just because we love you all. And I just found out last week, how many people actually listen to this podcast? Did I tell you, Anna? No, no. Well, so, you sent me the numbers, but I think you need to tell yeah. them. All right. I, anyways, guess in your head, everyone, everyone listening, give, give us a guess as to how many people. All right. Okay. Now that you have your number, uh, I was a bit surprised last, last month I checked in October, we had 8,200 subscribers. So that's so that means unique IP addresses across all of our platforms, right? Like Spotify and Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. And I was like, cool, that's that's awesome. <laughs> so that's just more than anything, it's a humbling, you know, massive thank you to everyone that's sharing it. Uh, the only reason we do this is to help you guys. So if you're sharing it, it means the world to us that it's good enough to to share with you, right? Yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. That's like <laughs> 10 times more than I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For sure, me too. Yeah. I never checked because I was like, yeah, let's let's do this podcast. Remember, Yana and I, we started the first episode talking about Spirit World. We're like, let's just let's just start a podcast and see what happens. And uh, and it's just like a passion project, kind of, kind of, you know, but it's really more of a mission. And uh, yeah, it's 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 really just nice to help people. So so well, to get also, into yeah. just a segue, I feel like I realized how impactful this podcast is. We've talked about this, but yeah. you and I, we have lots of conversations with people via, you know personal zoom chats or facebook messenger and i feel sometimes i'll end a conversation and someone's like man can you talk to so and so and and a lot of those things come into these you know podcast mm-hmm. episodes it's like a way to have this kind of share what we're learning and these conversations that we're having with people to right. a wider audience that also have those same questions and i feel like that's so awesome i didn't really understand like how much impact a podcast could have or conversations, but it is like what we do with a lot of people that are we can support, but we know we want to be able to reach so many more and this is a way we can. So I don't know. I feel like I'm learning a lot about um, how valuable this is and yeah. really grateful to everyone who's listening and supporting yeah. and sharing. hundred percent agree. Thanks, Yana. All right. So brother, sister relationship, this is uh, pretty timely for us. I was just in DC. This weekend, actually, we were oh, yeah. in a workshop. We were at the Washington Times. We were hanging out with the Maryland, D.C. young adults, and so uh, we had a Q and A at the time. This is a high noon workshop, right? <clears throat> and every time we do a Q and A, this cu- question comes up over and over and over again because in our movement, generally, we are taught that the brother sister relationship is sacred. It is one that should be, you know, it, it's a list of what you shouldn't do, right? You shouldn't touch, yeah. you shouldn't look, you shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Da, da, da. And then by the time people are in a matching process, it's like, okay, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to interact with this person of the opposite gender. I haven't really learned that. But at the under, other end of the spectrum, it's like how, it, you know, it's like, it's not a, binary black and white is like you're either you know completely ignoring the opposite gender and then all of a sudden you're blessed with them and you're having an intimate relationship and having anyways it's like how do we go from there and obviously there has to be a spectrum there has to be a continuum between the two extremes and so yana was like let's talk about this and she has a pretty pretty awesome concept that she's made called the uh, what is it called 
The four C's of connection. <laughs> oh, the four C's of connection. This is awesome. I think this is a, this is the answer to the question, what is a healthy brother and sister relationship? And I think you've really had a, a practical explanation as to how to do this. So uh, let's get into it. What are the four C's, first of all? Yeah. And these were really created with match couples in mind, but also looking at my own sons at the time, I just had two, but their connection and true parents words on siblings realm apart. Yeah. But these four C's are ways that you can connect um, that are really about ways to express love. So okay. the first one is curiosity. That's the first C. Mm. The second is caring. Mm. The third one is creativity. And the fourth one is communication. Okay. And yeah, and for each of them, well, I mean, okay, the idea behind this idea of four C's of connection is that like connection is so key for relationships, right? That's what helps you feel close to people. And especially for making a commitment, you know, matching commitment is the first step of commitment and then getting blessed together, huge commitment, eternal spouses, right? It's big. We get a lot of questions about, you know, how do I know? There's a lot of pressure around commitment, but I think part of what helps you stay committed and strong your commitment is connection. It's like a glue, right? Part of keeping it strong. Um, mm. So I think in that context, these four C's are really simple ways to keep building stronger connections. And like, particularly a thought of brother sister relationship, it helps because I feel that people, you know, they, and we don't have enough examples of good, healthy brother, sister relationship in the world. Like I think siblings realm of heart is the least developed and, um, you know, in a lot of ways, because there's so much confusion between men and women relationships. So connection automatically is more focused on physical connection or physical intimacy, especially if you're matched and planning to get blessed. Right. And so it's like, how can we, you know, after we've had seven months or more of communication, what are other ways we can still be deepening our connection with each other um, as brother, mm -hmm. sister? And yeah, I don't know. you want to add anything, Benji? Before no, we go no, let's something? no. I I want to I want to jump on your bandwagon. Yeah, your train of thought. Yeah, yeah. So I think one way to think about them is, and we can give some examples, but like for each of these words, C's, I gave like a question. So this is the question you can ask in order to work on that so for curio uh was curiosity the first one mm -hmm. hang on yeah so curiosity is like what can i learn from this person what can i learn from my match or what can i learn you know we're talking about brother sister in general from this brother or this sister and you can frame it like this can be in any situation maybe sometimes you're having a conversation and you're like whoa this is really different or i wonder why they responded that way or sometimes even very judgmental feelings like okay but instead of assuming um kind of judging it's more being curious like wow I don't think that way why do they think that way um starting out that there's always something you can learn from somebody yeah and I think this really is siblings heart because mm. again I came up with that looking at my own sons and how much like especially I'm an older sibling. So when I had my second son, I could see how much he was just like learning. And especially with my third son now <laughs> learning and absorbing and everything just by like looking at his older brother. And I think we sometimes don't think of our peers or other people that same way that maybe the families do, because you just grow up with these siblings and you go through all these stages yeah. But if you have that same kind of curiosity, like, wow, this is a person I can learn mm. who thinks different than me, who's lived a different life than me, you know, um, instead of kind of, I feel like a lot of time we try to make people understand us or be more relatable to us or, you know, like, instead of seeing how, wow, somebody who's really different, I want to learn from them. I want to be like them. I want to mm -hmm. inherit something, right? I think that's a very natural in the family thing, but it, we don't always think of that outside of our yeah. family. So hundred yeah, percent. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm thinking about, cause my mind naturally goes to the, the negative side. Yes. <laughs> That's good. I'm thinking of like, what is the opposite of curiosity in a relationship? 
And the first word that comes to my mind is arrogance. Because if someone's not curious, they're arrogant. That's, and I'll, I'll explain why. When I first got blessed with my wife, the, fear, the feeling after going to the matching ceremony, you know, if you heard my matching testimony, it's like, your father's like, choose your own spouse. Okay, great. Choose my spouse. You want to get matched? You want to get blessed? Sure. Okay, sounds good. Um, and the first questions I asked her, you can imagine how curious I was in that moment. I was like, what language do you speak? <laughs> you <know? laughs> like, yeah. Like the curiosity level is like max. And then I was like, okay. And then my next question was, what's your favorite color? Like that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. And I was like taking notes in my brain. I remember exactly what she said, I think. She said fall, fall colors or something like that. I don't remember. Maybe it was spring. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm just kidding. And then, and I was like, what kind of music do you listen to, right? And I'm, I'm, when you're talking, you know, it evokes these feelings of curiosity that I had for my wife. And I think you've been thinking about this a lot, especially I've been talking a lot with Andrew Love, right? And he talks about this point a lot, is that curiosity is a spark of love. Yeah. If you really love someone, it starts with curiosity. And the opposite of me being curious about my wife is being arrogant, meaning to the extent of like, oh, I know, I know her. I know what she's going to say. I know what she's going to do. I know, I know, I know. It's like, I know everything. And have you ever had a conversation with someone that you were talking to and you just had this vibe of like, they just know everything that you're saying. And they're not, they're not curious at all. It's like this filter of it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like, you can't have a conversation. You can't have connection with someone that's looking through the lens of, I know this, but rather what can I learn? And I had another similar example uh, I wanted to share. I was, you know, really having a conversation with somebody who is, you know, on the on the side of of like sexual education in schools, right? And this person is like genuinely believes that it's the school's responsibility to teach kids about sex, right? Which is the complete opposite of what I believe personally. And I've always thought it's so strange that how is it that I, as a parent, believe wholeheartedly that it's my job to teach my kids about sex. It's my job. That's the parent's job. But there are people in the world that believe that it's their responsibility to teach my kids about sex. Does that make sense? Yeah. Which is a complete- Educators. Job. Right. Yeah. It's a completely yeah. opposite, polar opposite view. But instead of just being like, oh, you know, which is usually what, you know, politics and news tends to do is just kind of label everyone that doesn't agree with you, whether it's left, right, middle, doesn't matter as like, oh, they're just, selfish they're just ignorant they're just the worst they're just you know they just kind of ride them off as you know it's just because they're self-centered but it's actually not the case there's a reason that people have this perspective and completely opposite perspective so i had curiosity when i was talking to this guy i was like i was like i really want to know like why is it that you believe that it's your responsibility as an educator to teach my children about sex right i just i was really curious and it turns out he has he had a very very good explanation or a not a good explanation, <laughs> but a reasonable explanation as to why his experiences in his life has has um, shaped him to believe that that his that he that as an educator is more capable of teaching children about sexuality than own parents are. Right? It doesn't excuse it. It doesn't mean that it's right at all or wrong, not in my opinion, but it helps me understand based on curiosity, right? And I know that's kind of an extreme example that might trigger people, whatever. But my point is because I was curious and not just labeling him as like, oh, you're wrong because you don't agree with me. It's like, it started this conversation of connection when love, where I could see him based on his you know, experiences and his pains and his, his mental processes that has led him to the conclusion that he thinks this is important. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so I just wanna share that. I think it's also interesting because you have very different views, but also you have similar values in the sense that you both care a lot about sexuality, educate people about it in different ways, right? Like there's actually a lot you have in common and yet very different views too. And I think, you know, I think that that's part of connection. And we, you know, we like to encourage in the matching and blessing mm -hmm. international matches, like that's true parents vision too. And I think what's so amazing about that is like yeah you've got to you learn to expand the way that you think about things because you're you know connected you build a connection with somebody who comes from a total different culture um mm. and it curiosity is so key but I also feel like this the, yeah these four c's even though we're talking about preparing for the matching and blessing they definitely help as you've mentioned um in marriage and for everyone to think about like how they're developing their connection. Um, 
I think that people, I, we tend to feel like we already know what we're going to say, or even with ourselves, we think like we're a certain way all the time, but actually we're constantly growing. And I feel like curiosity, if you have this de facto mindset that we're always growing, we're always learning, right? Like towards yourself, you mm -hmm. can have that also towards others, right? That uh -huh, yeah. we're not, we don't stay the same, even if we are, you know, people you know your whole life and same like your actual siblings again in your family right you're constantly growing and going through different things and mm -hmm. yeah I think it's it's good to be curious about each other it shows interest and love and I think the other thing as you mentioned and I think we can say this at the end too is that maybe for some of us some of these are more natural to do than for others you know of mm -hmm. these four C's. And so it's like just being aware of them. But I feel like maybe for some people, they are really curious in these communication time and conversations, right? You're asking a lot of these kind of questions. So curiosity may be something that's part of your connection, but then you're wondering how to build up other areas. So um, the next one, the caring one. Caring. Caring. So the okay. second C. And that one is the question, you know, how can I support or serve? Awesome. And yeah, and I think this one's interesting. Um, I just have a story with this, or I remember with Alexander and I, when we were first, we were already blessed, but he came to the US for the first time. And I was like in school and he had, he was on a break after um, finishing the army, which is a requirement in Norway. And so he was like, not able to really help me with school work like what I was working on but he would just stay up when I had to finish a paper and just stay up with me and it was like I felt like so much care from that like he was like you don't need to like it must be so boring but it was this he was really asking this question like how can I support and serve and it was like I'm with you like I can't help you with that paper or the class but I'm here to support and I really felt that and it was one of the ways that helped us like connect more closely because we were even though we were blessed early, we had this intentional time where we were kind of like a matched couple, like really getting to know each other. And that's one of the um, ways that I felt I really learned like this caring aspect of love. There's always some way you can serve and support, mm -hmm. um, even though it's not always obvious, right? Um, but it, it takes sort of asking that kind of question and yeah, for me personally, I think this one I'm a little bit less good at naturally. <laughs> I'm easier at the curious one, mm -hmm. but like looking for ways to serve and support, even if the person doesn't know how you can, like they're like, I don't know what you can do. Like you ask people, how can I help you? And if they don't have an answer, I'm like, okay. <laughs> but like to go deeper and try to think of what are other ways I can show support, even if this person doesn't know how they need support. And that's hard. And I have to say, like, um, some people are better at asking for help than others. But there's still ways <laughs> you can try to support people. I don't know. Like, yeah. uh, I think um, yeah. this is also for prayer for me. I, I often will pray about stuff like, what should I get? Or how can I help this person? Because I feel like God knows, <laughs> even if they don't even know how they need help or support, right? Or I don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. You have thoughts on this? Yeah. I think one thing I've always struggled with, especially in preparing for marriage, but also in my marriage, my whole life is, is being okay with not being recognized for serving people and caring mm -hmm. for people. And it was really hard because anytime I, I always had like this, this monster in the back of my mind saying like, oh, like if, if, if my wife doesn't appreciate something, then it's like, it was a waste. And I would always kind of like have, have a condition attached to everything that I would do for her is like, Oh, I hope she says something. And then I would get frustrated. Right. And then, and she always reminded me that if you, if you expect someone to acknowledge you for something, it's not done genuinely. It's not yeah. done unconditionally. And I really thought about that and it's taken me a while, but I feel like I've finally come to a place where I, I can be more okay. <clears throat> with just doing something and not expecting for return. It's kind of like a fun game, you know, like how much can I do for someone without them knowing? Like to yeah. what extent can I do something in a closet without anybody finding out about it? And then my threshold for that becomes higher and higher to the point where like, there's one thing that I did for my wife that I'll never tell her. <laughs> <laughs> 
my goal is to never tell her, but it's so hard not to. Um, she was feeling really, really down one, one time, some, some time during the month. I forgot one sometime during the month. Anyways, <laughs> she was feeling like depressed and everything. And, and I was like, ah, oh, you know, I, I didn't really know how to help her out of this, this situation. And then, so I contacted one of her good friends who lives in Japan, right? You know, out of the blue, I don't really communicate with her friends much, but I was like, Hey, could you call Hitoe? just give her a call and uh, see how she's doing. She's not feeling so great, you know, emotionally. And she did it. And, uh, and then he totally was like, I feel like God heard me. And oh, that's I, awesome. I needed exactly when I needed the right person contact me and, and called me. And I just felt, and that got her out of this, you know, this slump she was in. And I was like, yep, God, God loves you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'm going to take, I'm going to take that to my grave. And I've done this a few times, right. With her. <laughs> Um, and, uh, it's hard, it's hard to not do it, but I, but I always remind myself that I think the best, the, the, the most, uh, greatest acts of kindness are always done unconditionally without any attachments. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it, cause it is the genuine, like care is that key phrasing, right? How can I serve and support mm -hmm. you? It's focused on that person versus sometimes we get, I, I feel like it, your heart, you know, and people wanting to be recognized for serving, it comes out of a place of like, you know, I, I want to serve our community talks about living for the sake of others. We know it's true love, you know, it's all part of that. But I think sometimes it gets so focused on like, I need to be this kind of person. I need to be serving instead of like, what do they really need? Right. Mm. Um, putting it there, which that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, that's the, the frame. Cause there's been interesting situations where I really wanted to help a friend, but I felt like I was actually getting in the way of helping them because I was focused on I don't know, mm. feeling guilty, right? Of not, but it, <laughs> so it was more about me than really helping her. And yeah, so like, that helps yeah. me kind of gauge what do, what do I really want to do? What am I really trying to say or not say or all those things? Mm. So you're saying by definition, if something is caring, it's not for yourself. Yeah, for I mean, you, yeah. you're really, you get a lot out of it, right? But your, your focus is like, what do they need? How can I support them? And I think sometimes we, we know that it's good to be a caring person. So like I give my example where I'll like ask somebody, how can I support you? And then it's like, they're like, oh, I don't know. Or, and I'm okay. <laughs> you know? and then it feels like, oh, I asked. So I did my part, but it's not, if you go a little deeper, right? Like your example with Hitchway, you were really trying to figure out what to do. And she didn't even know. She probably wouldn't have even known what she needed right but you went and you called the friend like that's what I mean it like takes like really um mm. taking time and thinking about that person and that's how you get that answer and I think that's how they really feel that care in the end too you know yeah God works through it I got you so it kind of goes into this next C the third one which is creativity 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 okay. and so the question for that one is how can I surprise or bring joy mm. so mm. kind of going from this the caring was like about supporting and serving surprise and bringing joy it takes a lot of like thinking about the person and what do they specifically really enjoy I'm trying to discover that right or how can you surprise them and see you know learn from that like whoa I think your example with Hitchway really <laughs> applies here too you know but I think this, um, there's a quote I found from Vincent Van Gogh, the artist, that mm -hmm. was like so fascinating to me because he was saying that like the most artistic thing is to love others. And I thought that was so interesting. Like mm -hmm. creativity is fueled again by this, this love for others. That's what gets you really creative. Like trying to create something that will bring people joy through their music, through their poetry through the paintings um I feel like that's how God created this world creativity energy is so powerful yeah. but the thing I would say with this one is like the point is it's the thought that counts like a lot of people feel like they associate creativity with how you know I I would love to like write a song for my match but I'm not musical right or like I would love to make a poem but I'm not but that's not what creativity about is about it's much more about the thought and intention to try to do something and that's that's it maybe it's 
you know, finding a creative way to uh, your long distance to meet and have a game night, you know, online or finding a creative way to talk besides text, right? Like writing letters again. You know, it's it's not <laughs> about how artsy you mm -hmm. are, right? Mm -hmm. That's kind of the thought that counts is what it means is you've been thinking of this person and trying to find a way to bring them joy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's very much connected with the caring, I think. I got you. What are some examples from your your couple or from other couples? Yeah. Well, I feel like I learned I really like surprises and creative joy, but I feel like I sometimes put pressure on Alexander because I want that, you know, like, oh, I want to be surprised. It makes no, you're thinking of me. But I think little examples I've heard from, I think this was one of the how we met couples. Um mm -hmm. For people that are have long distance uh, matching process communication or maybe long distance after the blessing, which we yeah. were, was finding uh, creative ways to spend time together. Like for us, we did like play games through, I think we were using, oh my gosh, what was it? Messenger, MSN, this was a while ago. <laughs> Aim um, <laughs> or couples that would, I think this was a how we met, they would cook together they would find a time and they would cook even though they're not in the same place but like they're cooking together so it's like finding creative ways to spend time together um that helps build the connection because we went through many times feeling like we're not in the same place right so how do you build that connection you can only talk so much on zoom for my husband and I it was like how can we like actually you know, feel like, see different aspects of ourself, not just by talking, especially in the beginning, because I can talk a lot, I still are like that. And he, you know, is good at listening, but I wanted to see his character in other ways, like through, through games, through books, through, um, yeah, I think like cooking, like finding little activities that we could join and not feel like we always had to just talk. Um, and I felt that was a way I could be more like respectful of like talking as a strength of mine that I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but like trying to like lift up and enjoy things that he likes to do. And um, yeah, yeah. And I think that, that is a real like challenge, particularly maybe in COVID time too, that many people, it's harder to meet in person and they feel like that that limits their ability to um build their connection yeah but actually it just it takes a little bit more creativity that there are ways you can yeah man you know honestly when you talk about creativity my mind goes oh i don't know how to do that <laughs> that's like, a harder seat <laughs> like like along a similar vein like romance is something people talk especially guys are like you got a romance i'm like I don't know what that means because my brain doesn't work in surprise mode, you know? And it's so hard because because my thought is like, all right, I'm going to surprise my wife once a week. <laughs> I have these activities that we'll do. It's like, but then it's not a surprise. It's just, it's just a well, that's schedule. Why, this yeah. is why we're having this conversation because going away from romance, because that's what I think people think about a lot. It's yeah, like, yeah. okay, think about, your brother think about sibling like what are ways that siblings you you get really creative this is what I see watching my sons like they have these amazing inside jokes and world of games that like I try to figure out what they're talking about and like it's so hard they can come up with all these kind of fun things they create together and I think that yeah part of it's maybe their their relationship they're already so connected in a lot of ways but I feel like this is again this is the sibling what's unique about sibling realm of love and heart is that there's I, I guess the easiest way is to think about it in the family because you do spend so much time together that like on a rainy day that's what I feel like picture like siblings on a rainy day that in the hat, you're stuck in the in. house or yeah all of COVID the past years, they have to come up, yeah, with like creative ways to spend time together. And I think that a lot of times because people aren't, you know, they're not living together yet, if it gets matching conversation or 
you know, your friends or peers, it's not the same dynamic as like you're forced to be in the same house as your siblings growing up. But if you think about it from that framework, that's the idea I was thinking with creativity where it's like, mm. yeah, okay, <laughs> rainy day. Like, what do we do that we want to have fun? Cat in the hat, mm. right? How do you, I feel like every family has different things they would get into. Some families do like yeah. plays or they make up stuff or I guess it's games, floor is lava. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, the word that comes to mind, because I'm trying to understand this as like a, like not, not very surprising dude, you know, this like pretty, pretty regular. I do the same things a lot. Uh, the word that comes to mind is flexibility. And yeah. if I think it like that, I, I have experiences like, you know, like we went to Minnesota a few weekends ago. With, I took the kids, right? I was going to go by myself. And then I was like, just randomly like, you know, I'm going to take the kids to, so that Hitoi can have the house, you know, to herself and the baby. And she, yeah, she felt a lot of love from that. You know, it's not romantic. It's not, you know, sexual. It's just, I wanted to give her some space. So that was like a, be, be, me being flexible and not being rigid in the ways that things always are. Right. Or like we went to Hawaii this, this year in January. And I was just like, Hey, let's go to Hawaii. Um, for no reason, you know? other than making a baby, but, um, yeah, anyways, that, that's what comes to mind. <laughs> yeah. So I, cause I feel like, like I said before, these C's, it might be some are more natural, or easy for others to connect to, but yeah, mm. thinking of it another way, flexibility. Um, the main thing is you're really thinking all of these are about like putting time and thought into thinking about the other person and yeah, I'd be curious. Yeah. I'm sure there's other examples people have who are listening. <laughs> can you can let us know. You can listen. Yeah. Yeah, let us know. Um, the final one, this one is probably the most concrete, and I have a specific example in mind, but uh communication. I think a lot mm -hmm. of people know that that's an important part of connection. But I was giving that example with why creativity was important for us in our like matching and getting to know each other time because communication was more my strong point and harder for my husband so uh but what I want to talk about communication is there's three levels of communication and this is something that is directly from the marriage course it's not something I came up with but learned and for, to feel really connected to somebody you got to be able to communicate on the third level the deepest level so when it comes to levels of communication, there's three. The first one, like the surface level, is communicating about facts, like just straight up facts. And I'm going to use the example of like, there's fact. You got to get, if you're going to go to the Cosmic Blessing, the match couple, right, in Korea, you got to get plane tickets to go to mm -hmm. Korea, right? Like that's a fact. You got to communicate about how we're going to do that as this example. The second, the second level is communicating ideas or opinions, which is like a little bit deeper because it's not just like, okay, fact, got to go to get tickets to go to the Cosmic Blessing in Korea. But, you know, opinion, idea, like, okay, how about we spend some extra time in Korea or like, we know somebody who lives there, visit a friend, you know, start thinking of ideas or an opinion, like why, you know, opinion it's a good idea to go to Korea for the cosmic blessing and sharing those things. It's deeper, but it's still not the deepest level. And the deepest level is sharing about feelings. And the reason I'm using this example with like cosmic blessing, tickets to Korea, planning where to go is mm -hmm. um, a lot of times, and I feel like this happens for matched couples, this happens in marriage, when you have kids and parents, you operate in the facts and ideas because they take up a lot of time and planning. Like it's like the logistics, mm. but a lot of times there's deeper feelings around that. Like, you know, if someone's stressing out about getting tickets to Korea, the, the conversation is in the facts, but if you don't go deeper and letting people know, like, it's really important to me that we talk about this now because, um, you know, I'm feeling anxious with the times, feeling anxious about traveling or, you know, this is so many big decisions and I, I feel like I want my family to be around me. How are they not? Like being able to talk about the real stuff that's coming up and not just leaving it at like, 
we got to get these tickets. Hey, did you get the tickets? Like, you know, people can sometimes um, not realize like how much those facts and ideas are actually driven by their feelings. And it, and, and you feel like, okay, there's something more going on here, but they're not talking about it. And, you know, we're spiritual beings. I think we pretty much pick up if someone is feeling anxious or they're feeling worried or, you know, if they're not, right? But if they're not talking about it, it makes you feel not as connected to that person. And so I do think, and this is a maybe a gender things or something, but like women, sometimes it's easier talking about feelings or in, not always, maybe somebody in How a couple has an easier so time. Offended. <laughs> so offensive. Yeah. I know. I, I don't feelings. know, but like, Let's talk I will it. say that it's not always hundred percent agree. The stats, the stats say everything. Men suck at emotional regulation. They suck at it. Yeah. But we're really good at numbing emotions. That's for sure. Anyways, please continue. <laughs> well, no, because this is, yeah. this is one of the, the challenges of feeling connected. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. you know, and, and why, like I've been giving this general reference of thinking about siblings in the home and people that you grew up with, because when you spend a lot of time together, a lot of people feel like that's what builds connection. But this communication is really interesting because you can be spending a lot of time. You can even be talking a lot with somebody. But if you're only talking about, you know, mm -hmm. ideas and facts and not really mm -hmm. feelings, mm -hmm. that connection isn't as deep as like, hey, maybe you you talk to somebody for a short time, but you can talk about real feelings you haven't expressed. You're going to feel so much closer to that person, even if you know them much shorter than somebody you grew up with. So this is one of those areas that I would really encourage, even though it's like uncomfortable, maybe for some, or like some, like I said, it's easier to communicate feelings than others. It is a tool you can learn. There's a lot of resources on it. And this is a great thing to focus on in this time period when people are, you know, preparing, um, either they're in a matching conversation. I mean, you're already communicating, but thinking about how and what you've been communicating about or you're already committed and preparing for the blessing, even how you communicate about your future, those kind of things. It's good to be conscious of this and working on it. And there's also good, uh, I, don't, I don't like to use good and bad. I think like there's more helpful, healthy ways to communicate feelings. And there's more hurtful ways, like using I messages and how I feel versus mm -hmm. you always, do, you know, like, so mm -hmm. we can't go full on to communication, but we've got a lot of, um, you know, good videos on that inside MatchNet, especially the yeah, the Dominion course for couples. 100%. So I would recommend like that's something to do together in this time. I keep going back to like really practical stuff that can help yeah. help you. And it's a foundation for later in the relationship. Yeah, I think the beautiful part, the beautiful thing about a marriage is that you have somebody to talk to talk with every day. And this is usually what uh, people struggle with if they get into the marriage and they don't have the muscle and the habit of being able to communicate and to connect. They go into a relationship and they struggle because they don't know how to do it. Typically speaking, generally speaking, <laughs> men that don't know how to address their emotions struggle because they don't talk about it and they squash it or they escape or they numb the emotions through any supernormal stimuli like video games, Drugs, alcohol, smoking, porn, anger, right? And it's not a man issue. It's, a, it's, it's, it's male and female. People that don't understand how to communicate struggle when they get yeah. into relationships, which is why I tell people one of the absolute best things, I, in my opinion, the best thing you can do to prepare for a, mar for a relationship is practice being in relationship <laughs> with people, not romantic relationships, but have the capacity to be, to have curiosity, to have creativity, to have uh what was the second one caring caring, caring. and having uh what was the fourth one communication communication i knew that just yeah. testing you <laughs> <laughs> well i having, forgot to say that yeah. i jumped to the levels of communication but just like to keep it really simple like you're mm -hmm. talking about is um the question you can ask yeah. is how can i understand mm. how can i understand and so a lot of times people focus on communicating like trying to be understood but how can I understand and so even if you're somebody who finds it hard to communicate 
your own emotions and feelings about things, if you at least yeah. as a starting point, try to understand and ask like, oh, how are you feeling about, you know, getting tickets to go to Korea, right? Like opening up that conversation, even if you really don't want to talk about it, but you make it focused on how to understand the other person. Because I think where a lot of miscommunication happens is people are just listening to respond instead of listening to understand. Mm -hmm. And this is again, straight from the marriage course, but I feel like, yeah, there's communication is a lot. It, it brings up a lot of challenges. And I think all of us have areas we need to work on being better listeners. So that how can I understand is more on the listening side of communication. Like if you can work on at least your listening skills and really listening to understand and hear what people are saying, you know, recognize if somebody's talking just about the facts and ideas, try to try to find out what are the feelings under that. And maybe it's too confrontational to ask them, yeah. <laughs> but you can be like listening for, right. oh, they keep bringing this up. This is really important to them. You know, like, why is this? And then put in a little curiosity. Oh, this seems really important to you. Why is it so important, right? That's a little easier way than going straight and direct. Like, how do you mm. feel about this, right? Like that might be confronting and somebody might not answer. So I went right into those levels of communication because I didn't want to forget, but like the bigger question is just like when you're trying to develop connection through communication, like seek, how can I understand? How can I understand this person better? What, you know? Yeah, another way that I heard that put is seeking to be interested, not interesting. Yes, yeah, that's a good one. And yeah. love, you love talking with people that are interested and don't try to be interesting. And, totally. and uh, this, what you were just saying explains why some people can live in the same household as many people, you know, live with their parents, live with a spouse, live with, you know, family members, but still feel alone and isolated. It's because relationships are more about depth and quality as opposed to quantity, which is nice because that means you can develop a relationship. And I talk about this a lot, but my dad and I never had a relationship where we talked about emotional things. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, that was like the last thing I wanted to do, but I also knew I needed to do it if I wanted to succeed in life and, and learn about manhood and, and be a dad and, and husband stuff. <clears throat> so we started, instead of thinking of it as like, oh, my dad and I have a bad relationship, quote unquote, or we don't have that kind of father-son relationship, or my dad's Japanese, which is like all beliefs I had. I was just like, why can I just develop the relationship to a point where it is a good yeah. relationship in my, yeah. in my view. Right. And that's what we've done. And it's like, it's, it's life-changing. It really, really is. So, so I, I think it's valuable to have just a few people that are really, really close as opposed to having a lot of people that are just, you know, you can't really communicate with, you can't really have these kind of conversations with all the logistics and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think that it, you know, kind of the whole reason we wanted to talk about this topic is like mm -hmm. in society, there we're trying to create more of a world where it is this like really a loving place. And uh, that's why the siblings realm of heart, like it is so important because that is how we relate to all of our peers too. You know, like if we really see each other as brothers and sisters and communicating and I feel like um yeah even in certain scenarios it very much intentionally stays only at ideas and facts right mm -hmm. like we kind of make it and people feel end up feeling very alone and isolated because yeah but I, I think it goes back to this understanding of like yeah if we really are all brothers and sisters one family under god right there would be much more space allowed for for these four c's of connection you know yeah so that's awesome. What is something that frustrates you about mistakes people make in creating relationships, healthy brother, sister relationships? Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing is like not being able to value what a brother, sister heart is, especially, I feel like this is especially maybe in the, the matching process, but it really comes from the dating world where people just try to jump so quickly into seeing somebody as a romantic partner or what they can give them instead of like even these four questions that we talked about you know how can i understand going backwards <laughs> you know, it, yeah. 
how can I understand? How can I surprise and bring joy? How can I support and serve? Um, how can I learn, right? Like if you start relationships, like really kind of thinking about that versus it irritates me, like Hollywood movies are like always examples of people is like trying to make it all about themselves or they're trying to just to hide who they are and keep up this certain whatever fake identity. And it's like all about them. And then it ends up, you know, you feel like so many movies are all like that instead of just what does it look like to create a healthy relationship with a person as your brother or your sister? And even starting off and, you know, matching conversations that way, like this is my brother, this is my sister, these four questions, we may or may not decide to commit and pursue the blessing, but it's, I really wish them the best in their pursuit, you know, with another person. Um, I think sometimes we just bring so much like attachment. I know we talked about this in another episode, but we, we put so much pressure and things on because we, we make it more about ourselves or like what we expect a romantic relationship should look like and all those things versus like, no, what should a brother sister relationship look like? That's really what matching time is about. But based on these brother sister ways of connecting is how you can ask those deeper future questions, which is what you're looking for in a spouse, right? Like, you got to ask the values and the future thing. But I think people spend a lot of time on surface stuff or like typical yeah. romantic things that's actually from movies that's missing the deeper, you know, what yeah. does this person want to do in the future? And so that's why I feel like the matching process is going to be the mainstream culture in the future <laughs> because it's such a like healthier way to approach relationships mm -hmm. and the family dynamic and all of it. But um, yeah. I don't want to like make mm -hmm. people feel bad. It's just, this is what we, the reality, what we live in. So there's a lot of confusion. And that's why I think, you know, what does siblings love look like? Like the whole topic today is to help, help, right. you know, bring some more clarity. I don't want to, <laughs> sorry, go ahead. Another C, clarity. Uh, yeah, there you go. Five C's, six C's, challenge. I was thinking about challenge, right? Because I like challenge. I think challenge, anyways, <laughs> we won't we won't make more than four. Um, but uh, I, I don't want to leave here without addressing the question of, you know, why is it why is it suggested by you to not uh, develop physical romance before commitment because it helps, you know, quote unquote, this is what people say, it helps to find combat compatibility, you know, it's like, how do you know you're physically compatible with somebody uh, before you're married? Yeah. I mean, that's the, um, such a like de facto expected answer in society. I, I go back to, because, and I feel like this is going back to what we're always saying about what's the purpose of life mm -hmm. and like love and developing our heart and capacity to love. And, you know, marriage, a lot of the physical intimacy, it feels is so exciting because especially for us growing up, keeping purity, keeping, you know, like that exclusive conjugal love is an exclusive intimate relationship. Unlike the other realms of heart, you can have many siblings, you know, you have parents, you have parental figures, children, you can have many children, but husband and wife, it's only one. And so it's so special and it's so precious to God. And it's our natural heart that we want to have that relationship. It's just that we need patience <laughs> to really make that um, and yeah. invest into that exclusive marriage relationship. So like, I think what happens is we skip over this sibling realm of heart and think like, oh yeah, well, we're going to be friends. And, you know, we just kind of jump into marriage without figuring that out and respecting that and seeing that that's actually part of, it's going to be a huge part of our marriage too, is like this brother, sister love and heart for each other. So it's like, I feel, I don't know if I'm making sense, but I think the physical intimacy is only one aspect of intimacy. There's so many aspects of intimacy, emotional, spiritual, and people rush to the physical one because it's what, this is what makes it different. This feels like, oh, I'm, you know, uh, this is the only person that I'm, I'm going to be physically intimate with. That's our natural heart. We want that from marriage, but we try to rush that too quickly instead of like 
part of being having that incredible husband wife relationship is your ability to be emotionally intimate to be spiritually intimate to be able to share these things and that comes from these four C's of connection that comes from building a really healthy brother sister relationship first that you're naturally able to do that and a lot of physical like a healthy sexual relationship comes from being able to communicate about things right what you like what you don't like and share honestly and I think I think that's the biggest challenge is we like try to rush and skip over the steps instead of like how God naturally designed our hearts to grow and actually make it easier for us to build that incredible relationship we're longing for. And if you, if you jump over the sibling part, it's just making it harder. Like you got to figure it out right later on in marriage instead of like confidently coming into that incredible relationship with your tools of communication or practicing yeah. caring and all those things that you can practice with your siblings. Yeah. That's a long answer, but I, I, really no, I, I agree. I mean, it. don't skip it. It's there like, to help you. Yeah. I think the way that you approach it is, is really good. Yeah. The question is, is the wrong question, right? If you, if you look through your entire life through the lens of what makes me happy and what feels good, then yeah, it's very easy to justify jumping right into a physical or sexual relationship because it makes you feel good. But we're talking about the blessing. That's why we're here, right? We're talking about eternal life. We're talking about breathing the air of true love in our afterlife. So the question is different. The goal is different, yeah. right? The goal is how do I grow? How do I learn to love? And I think the reason that this question is confusing for people is like, why can't we just, you know, be physical and be sexual and then figure out, uh, you know, how compatible you are is because there is an, false assumption and underlying false assumption that a healthy relationship has to be sexual. A healthy relationship has to be physical. And I can disprove that right now and debunk that because there are many, many, many physical sexual relationships and marriages that are miserable. There are many, many people yeah. that are in, in quote unquote, healthy sexual relationships that also have crippling addictions to porn. So what's yeah. going on? That means people can, you can be physically connected with somebody, but emotionally be alone and isolated and completely alone. So it's not the factor of a successful relationship is that it is physical, but rather how connected people are. And people are fooled into believing and confused into believing that sexuality and physical, physical affection is a need, a bi biological need. And I believe this for most of my marriage. I do. I did. 100% believed it. I said to my wife, I need this. I need more physical affection. I need it. I need it. But what I was missing is that it's not a need. What is needed is connection. What is needed is emotional intimacy and feelings of love, of mutual love and respect and trust. That is what a need is for us to live. And a physical relationship is the byproduct of a healthy relationship. Yeah. A genuinely selfless give and take relationship of sexuality and physical closeness a real relationship is the byproduct, the natural consequence of a relationship that's based in real connection and genuine uh, living for the sake of each other. And that's what I learned. And that's what my wife taught me in the beginning stages of our, of our marriage when I was like, I need more, you know, hand, I need you to hug me more. I need this. I need this. When she kept reminding me over and over, God bless her. That's not what you need. That's what you want. What you need, what we need is develop our relationship because she, and she said, honestly, she's like, because I don't feel like giving it to you. I don't feel a natural, the natural consequence, the natural byproduct of a healthy relationship. And so I had to be patient and realize that we need to work on this relationship to the point that we felt connected to the point where we're happy now, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's a belief that most people believe, I think, which is false, is that a sexual relationship means something is healthy. It's not. There's probably way more physical relationships in the world that are unhealthy than healthy, that are based in what, what can I get from this relationship? And so we're trying to help y'all folks not be in that kind of situation. Okay. Yeah. And I feel Any like God yeah. too, like originally a lot of the confusion is because we're not in a ideal as God hoped world. It, it wouldn't have been so hard. It would have been much more natural feeling, you know, yeah. if we develop these realms of children's heart, siblings, then conjugal and parent, like in that way, God designed, but yeah, we're trying to help with where we are now, what we've experienced, like, and to feel like you can always grow and always learn <laughs> what people feel, you know, mm. and that's, what's so powerful about your testimony and your story. And, um, I, don't, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I feel like 
we we grew up with a lot of fear around certain things, especially the physical relationship and intimacy. And I I'm I don't want match couples to feel afraid or like fearful for wanting to be physically close. It's a good natural, like you want that. It's just see this um these four C's of connection, what we've been talking about as just helping help see it as helping you it's not something we're saying to restrict don't 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 but it's really to help create an even more incredible marriage mm -hmm. and a foundation and that's like all all of the things a lot of the guidance in the matching process it's really there to serve and help you and make it easier and um learning from all the things we've learned from everybody like we're all part of this culture we're creating together so guess that's what I want to say because I know a lot of us grew up with a lot of fears don't 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 and what's right and wrong and it makes it restrictive to really connect with people too because we're so afraid of saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing so you know don't come from that mindset it's more like find the joy find the wow you know curiosity care like discover oh all these aspects of what brother sister love looks like and you know that's a fun thing right, to focus mm. on and figure out. And that's going to help you later on. Mm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Yana. Well, let's conclude by saying, if you guys want to check out the MatchNet program, which is a step-by-step -step matching process guide for y'all, you can check it out at matchnet.us. We look forward to having you there. All right. Yeah. God bless you. See you in the next episode.